In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do this simple title sequence where the words appear from within the shape and then the shape scales down and takes the word with it. This is all going to be converted into a motion graphics template as well. So you can take this kind of animation and reuse it for however long you are using Premiere Pro. If that's what you came for, let's dive right into it. Let's start by getting our type tool and I'm just going to type directly into the program monitor in order to make it as transferable to each graphic you make in the future is to make this center aligned. I'm going to take my text alignment right here underneath the essential graphics panel. If you don't have that up, just go up to window essential graphics and underneath edit, you'll see the word title since we already typed that in. So right here we go to center align text and that will move it over here. Then we're going to align that to the center of our program monitor. Let's go ahead and make our rectangle. If you don't see the rectangle tool, just click and hold on that shape. So you might see the ellipse tool or the polygon tool. Right now it's the rectangle tool. We're gonna just click and drag and you can make this however big or small you want to. And it might be a little different for you when you first made your rectangle is that in the appearance, I just have stroke selected you might have had a fill selected. So in the appearance, make sure that the fill is not a selected and my stroke is centered. It's not inner or outer, it's centered. Just so I can keep things in order, I'm going to take this shape later and just call it stroke rect, as in it's a rectangle with a stroke. Next thing we need to do is center that rectangle. I like the title to come from just below the rectangle line. You could have it come from below the program monitor, but I just think it looks nicer coming with the acceleration or deceleration coming directly from below the title. I think the aesthetic just looks a little bit better. Highlight the title, and then I'm gonna go over here to text, scroll on down to the transform underneath the title and click on my position. Now I've made the keyframe at the beginning of the clip, if I hold shift and hit over on my arrow key, that will go five frames, 10, 15, 20, 25. So I've gone 25 frames in. Maybe I'll make this a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to create a, another keyframe. Right now there's, oh, <laughs> one thing that's different about mine to yours is that I have something called pin to clip and I'll just show you what that does. So normally within the effects control panel, if I click right here, and go to pin to clip, this is what you're probably used to. So if I take my playhead, I can't go beyond the beginning of that clip. Same with the ending. So if I take the playhead, I can't go beyond the ending of that clip. When you're animating graphics, it really helps to have access to the timeline beyond the beginning and ending of the clip. So this is where something like turning off pin to clip. So if you go up to the effects controls, undo pin to clip. Now watch what happens if I take my playhead and go over. I'm now moving the playhead inside the effects controls of that clip, but it's allowing me to go beyond the beginning and ending of that clip. Right here at the beginning of the clip, we have the title in the middle, but I want that to start at the bottom position. So I'm gonna go right here to this down arrow and I will move this to just below the rectangle line. Zoom out here. I'm going to go to this keyframe and just so we can preview this, this is what it's gonna look like. <laughs> Very basic. But that's okay. I'm going to go right here and there should be a handle or if you have this expanded, there should be a handle right here now. And I'm going to take this handle and move it all the way towards the previous keyframe. And that will turn that into a easy ease type style or I guess a Bezier keyframe. So now I'm going to go to the first keyframe and bring this in like this. So I've taken the handle and moved it as much as possible to the left for the beginning keyframe. If I click over here, I've also taken this handle and moved it as much as I can to the left. Now the kind of animation that we have is this. I think that's much smoother than what we had before of Although I will say I'm a big fan of the old school Nintendo and this kind of thing just reminds me of old title sequences when you would open up an 8-bit game, like a Mike Tyson's punch out when the title comes up. Anyhow, I digress. That's probably a little bit too old for a lot of you guys. Hopefully you know what Mike Tyson's punch out is. Probably like 
just teach us how to do the title hub here. We don't want to learn about old school Nintendo. Well, just give me a couple seconds to relive my nostalgic past. Now that we have that in place, I want to animate the scale up of our rectangle. I'm gonna go back over here, create keyframes in the same exact position of our transform of the title. I know that I'm locked in at my first keyframe and I wanna go to the shape layer. Now we're going to do our scale. So I'm going to click this on for our first keyframe. Then I'll scroll back down here and make sure that I end on the same keyframe. So I'm just gonna go to next keyframe right here and I'll create another keyframe. I know that the scale ends where I want it to, but I want the beginning to be zero. So now we have something like this, but we want that same acceleration and not linear movement. So I'm going to go back to my previous keyframe, uncollapse this arrow for it, and do that same motion where I click this ending spot keyframe and drag it in like so. Now scale is a little bit different because there's uh, two different parameters for velocity and like placement or something like that. But with a little bit of finagling, you should be able to get it just right. So right now we have something like this. Looks pretty neat to me. Now I need to animate out or scale down the title at the end. So I'm gonna move this over and I don't really mind where I add these keyframes in the beginning because I kind of just want to go by feel for scaling it down. This first keyframe is basically just going to hold the state of this keyframe right here. And at this keyframe is where we want to go back down to zero. So I'm going to go to zero. That's actually not bad. So it goes in like this and goes out like that. I like that speed. I'm just going to move this to the end of the clip, so now it looks like this. Since I'm content with how the animation looks at this point and the timing of it, I'm going to go to Stroke Rect, right click, Duplicate. Now I'm going to rename this into Matte Rect, just meaning that I'm going to turn this into a matte for the title. For this one, I just want the fill and I'll keep the stroke on there. It looks like we have some shadow. I do not need the shadow on this. And because we've duplicated this, it's gonna have the same exact animation parameters as our stroke rectangle. And now all we need to do is mask with shape. Because the mat is above the title, it is matting that to the rectangle. The animation looks great to me now in terms of having a template that you can adjust per each project in the future. Now we just got to change this into something that we can use on all of those projects for the remainder of time that we use Premiere Pro. All you have to do inside your effects controls is look at this blue rectangle, click and drag it, and that's your intro duration. So I want to make sure that all of my keyframes are within this lighter gray area because that's going to be protected whenever we make our clip longer or shorter. And you can see that right here. If I make this clip this long, notice that this light pink area stays the exact same amount. If I make it this long, again, the pink area or the lighter pink area is still the same duration. Now we need to do that same thing with our outro. So I'm going to click right here and it says outro duration and make sure that I keep these keyframes within that protected area of my outro duration. And now I can make this as short or as long as I want to. If I go to my effects controls right here and turn pin the clip, you can get a better representation of what this would look like. See how it comes on, it comes off. But if you needed that title to stay on the screen longer, that's okay. So I'm just gonna make it like that long and now the title will stay on the screen longer and go away. We are basically ready to turn this into a template. I'm going to right click export as motion graphics template and just call it title in rect. Hit OK. Go to your central graphics, go to browse and right here install motion graphics template because it does not uh, install the motion graphics template immediately after you have created it. So I'm gonna click that. There's my title in rect, hit open. And now what's awesome about this is it will animate as you hover scrub inside your browse. So I can click and drag this into 
my project and it will always be the same. And what's great is now I can adjust the duration however I want to. One thing to take into account here is that if your title exceeds the bounds of your rectangle, you are going to have to adjust the rectangle's size. The word subscribe comes in there. If you wanted to highlight our stroke and make this a rounded corner, within the matter of seconds, I've adjusted the word inside my rectangle to whatever I need it to be. I've made it rounded corners, but I have that same basic animation right there. It pops on, it's transparent, pops off. If this video was helpful, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. My name's Javier Mercedes, and until next time, I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.